Hey guys, today I'm taking a look at Old Brown Shoe by the Beatles, another great George Harrison song. It became sort of a B-side, I guess, but it's just such a great rocker, right? And uh, it's really cool to see him in the Get Back film, the recently released Get Back documentary, coming up with a tune and working on it, you know, sitting at the piano and making it happen. Uh, anyway, I want to cover a lot in this song because I've gotten a lot of requests for it. So naturally, I'm going to be covering his incredible guitar solo. It's such a cool solo. Uh, the doubling of the bass part, all that stuff. But I also want to talk about the chords. For those of you who maybe just want to play it on guitar or play it with a friend or whatever, uh, because, you know, it's piano-driven as well, and then those great guitar lines over the top of it. So the first thing we have, and I'll show you how I kind of cop it on guitar. The first thing we have is that C7 chord. So I'm on the 10th fret on the D string, the 12th on the G string, and the 11th on the B string. And to make that kind of rocking left and right hand motion on the piano happen, what I'm doing is I'm hitting the uh, D string first. And then I bring the G string into it with an upstroke. It's all alternate strokes for this, but you kind of hit both of them after that initial note. Come back and hit the uh, D string again, and then swing down and sort of bring in the B string, the second string as well, along with the G string. So you get this. And then you start it over again. So after that initial grab of the G string, swing back to the D string again, like I said, and then just keep rocking with the uh, B string and the G string. So it's that shuffle groove, right? It's just rocking back and forth. Uh, now, if you want to play it an octave lower, which is kind of cool, uh, you can just play it down here, bar across the A string, the D string, and the G string at the third fret, and then place your ring finger on the fifth fret on the D string. And that sounds pretty cool as well, especially if you're playing it on guitar, but also it allows you to bring in that bass lick if you want to. is fine I just prefer it now once you're into the song you're just uh, you're just grooving on that chord for a while right and then the next chord is going to be a D minor 7 okay so we're going to play Same thing on the D minor 7th, it's just four strings instead of three. So I kind of hit the uh, A string and the D string and then swing up and grab the uh, B, the G, and probably the D as well, right? And then we start moving through these chords. These are all predominantly dominant 7th chords. And what I like to do is kind of hit the first... Uh, two strings, the lowest strings in the chord, which is actually the sixth string and the fifth string. And then kind of swing only to that G string as far down as the G string to emphasize the sound of the dominant seventh. Although it doesn't have to be perfect, right? If you happen to hit another string, it's all totally cool. Uh, but one thing you'll notice on the recording, we've got the F7. And in case you don't know what that is, I'm barring all six strings at the first fret. My second finger is on the second fret on the G string, and my ring finger is on the third fret on the A string. So we're doing that same shuffle groove. And then what I do, you move up to a G sharp seven, um, or an A flat seven if you prefer, uh, but you'll hear it drop into the seventh on the recording. So what I like to do is put my pinky on the uh, sixth fret on the D string. Go. And you definitely hear that on the recording where they kind of drop it into the seventh. It sounds really cool, right? And then you move back to F. We'll go through all of this entirely, but you move back to F. E7, you can just take that off of the neck like that if you want to. And then we have an A minor. 
once again barring all six strings at the fifth fret and then my ring finger is on the seventh fret on the A string and my pinkies on the uh, seventh fret on the D string and you can kind of bring more strings into that one if you want to okay so sort of playing this from the beginning this would be kind of an arrangement for a guitar that you could do you could do the uh, you could do that if you want to or start off with the uh, exact range that the piano plays it in and then go down to that chord starting the verse, okay? So that would kind of be your arrangement for the uh, for the verses, okay? Now for the B section of the song, uh, we're just going to play a few chords, a couple of chords, G7 to F7, and then we'll also have an F sharp diminished chord in there, very George Harrison, right? And this is the part, if I grow up, I'll be a singer wearing rings on every finger, <laughs> pretty cool. And uh, so we're just going to move between G7 and F7, G7, F7, and then F sharp diminished. the B section okay so uh, the chords once again are G7 F7 back to G7 back to F7 and then F sharp diminished and then you can see on that G once again they drop in that seventh and you're back in there okay so I just wanted to cover the chords you know basically what's going on underneath okay and a bit of the piano as well but the most important thing which is what I'm sure everyone is here for is those great guitar parts from George Harrison. So here we go. So the first actual guitar that we hear in the song comes right after that piano intro on the first verse where George sings, I wanna love this right, but right is only half of what's wrong. And he plays these great double stops. And then he plays it a whole step higher. And he gives those a nice vibrato. So with the tab up on the screen, I'll show you what fingers I choose to play that. So I'm starting with my second finger, sliding from 10 to 12 on the G string. Grab 13 on the B string and then give it a little bit of a, you know, nice vibrato. Then do it again. And then we play a minor third double stop, or what is really just part of that C7 chord. Music theory. <laughs> there you go. So I use my first two fingers for that. It's a half step slide from 10 and 11 to 11 and 12. And you can hear he really just shakes that up, right? Sounds really cool. And then a whole step higher. And then he takes off, right? So what I tend to do uh, to copy the recording, I use the uh, middle position on my telly for those double stops. And then if you can flick it fast enough, you can get into the power chords for the next section. just flick back and forth right so uh, he enters those power chords with a, with a slide right a little glissando so we're just playing an F power chord one on the uh, sixth string and three on the A string and there's a bit of muting going back here and he's just doing that shuffle feel like what I was talking about with the uh, essentially the piano chords and then come up to G sharp or A flat add your pinky Okay, to the uh, D 
D string at the sixth fret so we can drop that seventh. That sounds really cool. So we have. power chord and then an A power chord. So we have F, right? And then we've got G sharp dropping the seventh, then back to F, E, and finally A, okay? So where he plays all those parts is pretty self-explanatory, all right? But in the B section of the song, him and Paul, Paul and he, <laughs> uh, double that great line on the uh, part, if I grow up, I'll be a singer. And that is played like this. <laughs> Pretty cool part indeed, so let me walk you through that nice and slow with the tab on the screen, and I'll explain my picking on that as well. That's strictly alternate picking, and it's that shuffle feel, right? And then we go right into the lick. So it's strictly alternate picking. There isn't a lot to explain, but I think playing it with straight alternate picking is really the best way to go. There's a little bit of muting back here, as you can tell, but not overly so. And you play it there. That covers the G7 chord, by the way. They play that over the G7 chord. So you play it three times. You move to F, take the riff to the first fret. You can see it on the tab there one time, okay, and then come back and do G three times again and F one time. So it's three, one, three, one. you've done that 3131 three, one, this is really cool um they played this over the f sharp diminished chord so they just raise that f note up to f sharp and the rest of the riff stays the same <laughs> want to do the same thing there on that G power chord. You've got the pinky involved and then drop it with that bar so you get that seventh in there. It's just really cool sounding. Very cool stuff. All right, so let's get to George's solo, which is just so good. It's ridiculous. Pretty cool, right? Classic George Harrison. It's right up there with Hey Bulldog or just the finest of those kinds of solos that he did. Uh, so a couple of things about the tone first. He's got a pretty bright tone going here, all right? And what I've done is I've added chorusing to it uh, to kind of capture a bit of the effect that he has. Just gives it that little bit of shimmer, if you will. All right. So that can help a lot. A bright tone, good distortion, of course. Uh, not metal, but just good, solid distortion. And so let's talk about the particulars of this solo. Uh, I don't hear him actually doing a pull-off out the gate. The pull-off seems uh, obvious on the second lick that he plays, but it sounds to me like he starts with a pre-bent note, about a half step. And you can see on the tab what happens there. Pre-bend it. Eight on the G string, 10 on the D and back to eight on the G. But it's really quick, right? And then he just plays. 
and you definitely hear a pull off there, right? So that first phrase then is very bluesy. And then what he does is he, he attaches himself to that G sharp seven chord and he plays. So that's the high end of a G sharp seven chord, right? So he slides into it. I use my second finger for this. And for the picking, I go down, down, up, down, up. Because it's pretty quick, right? Pretty quick and deep. And then he plays this great lick. And you can finger that in whatever way you want to, um, but hopefully you can just see what I'm doing if I do it nice and slow with the tab. You could also play like that, you know, attach it to your ring finger and move your way down. So I consider that one phrase with the last note actually being the beginning of the next phrase. You see what I mean? So that's like a different phrase to me. Just like that. And then he caps the solo off with... Which is really cool because those first one, two, three, four, five, six notes, or seven, whatever it was, they're very staccato with a little bit of muting, super staccato, and then he opens it up once he hits the flat five of the blues scale. That note right there. So real slow we have. And he gets that kind of mosh of the notes at the end being together, all right? So let me play the whole solo nice and slow. Just really, really cool stuff. Classic George Harrison. All right. So there you go with Old Brown Shoe from the Beatles. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you guys later.